take two. <laughs> I don't know what happened the first time round. Sorry, you guys. Um, someone started calling me, and normally I can just reject the call, and and that's that's the end of it. But it, it didn't happen quite like that, and it just kicked me off off the live. So I'm so sorry. I was on a roll then as well. <laughs> so. Let me know when you guys have got logged back in and you can hear me and you can see me and I'll start again. Hey Kate, it wasn't actually a Facebook glitch, it was someone calling me. Um, and you, normally you can just reject it and it just, it goes off, but it, it didn't quite happen like that. So, sorry guys. <laughs> so, um, okay, let, let me start again. Good morning, Claire. Um, what I'd love to know, first of all, before we before we dive in to today. Hey Kerry, I'm glad you're back. Um, let me know that everyone's got just just type back, I'm back when you're back, so I can get, get going again and know that I've got the people that really need to hear this this morning. Hey Sean, you're back. Good morning, my love, <laughs> again. Um, who else has managed to get back on? And um, I'll get started. Okay. Hey Vera, good morning. There's some other people logging in now that weren't here the first time. Good morning, Catherine. How are you doing? Hi, oh, Renita, you're back. Okay, <laughs> okay, we'll, we will carry on. We'll carry on. Um, so, as I was saying, sharing the journey as it happens, it takes an enormous amount of um, vulnerability and courage on my part. I'm not used to doing it like this. As I said, I'm used to sharing things when they're already done hey amanda like yay guys we've just hit this goal and this is how we did it and these are the lessons i learned along the way um but sharing as things happen as they unfold in real time is very different very very different um so yeah totally outside of my comfort zone and what i want to share with you today is morning morning ariana is um just some things that have been unfolding for me over the last couple of days in the lead up to the big launch, <sighs> bigger than I've ever done before, more than I can even comprehend right now. If you can probably see every time I think about it, I get this mixture of like nervous excitement in my chest. It's like a whew, about to ride a roller coaster type feeling because I just know I know the consequences of launching something like this, this big. Morning, Nicola, how you doing? Um, and obviously video diary and the journey up to it is helping just, I hope, people that are on their own business journey come with me on mine and learn some of the things that I'm learning along the way and some of the lessons that I thought I'd learned but are now having to learn at a deeper level. Who knows what I mean by that? You know when you think, yeah, got that now, tick, I'll never make that mistake again, I'll always remember that. And then before you know it, you're learning the same lesson <laughs> because you've fallen into an old pattern or who else can relate to that? Um, thank you, Nicola. That's really, really sweet of you. So we are 16 days out now from our live class on the 11th of February where I announce what this big thing is <laughs> that we've been working on alongside a really epic training that we're currently behind the scenes putting together for you, which I'm really, really excited about as well, because this training for the first time, it's not something that is like a step-by-step -step how to guide. It's way less tangible than that and way more powerful because it's a feeling that this live class, this space that I hold for you and I and to get together, it's a feeling you go away with, like an unstoppable burn that just injects a whole new lease of life into you and your business and it's a really special um environment experience that i'm putting together for you to announce the birth <laughs> of this new movement and the branding for it oh, it gives me chills i shared it with the team yesterday and i know they felt what i felt because when you when you're creating something and visioning something of a vibration that's so strong and so powerful and that energy is like imprinted onto that work and anyone that receives it takes a piece of that, you know, it has an impact on their energetic vibration and good morning Tanja and I saw that so evidently 
when I'm sharing this branding with just my designer and I have just got this really powerful connection where I just speak like blah, 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 and I'm seeing this and I'm seeing this and I'm seeing this and, and I think, oh God, how can she take that and make something from it? And she does, she nails it every time. It's like she just gets it. There's like this link between us that's just electric and it's, oh, I can't wait for you to see it, I can't wait. The mission statement for it was channeled. The, <laughs> there she is. <laughs> The mission was channeled and it just has carries so much more meaning for me than anything I've ever done, ever. Like I, I didn't think it was that was possible. I didn't think that my work could have more meaning. It's like that old feeling of just when you think you can't go deeper and then you go deeper than ever before. Like. The mission for this movement, for the launch, as I said to you before, <laughs> you get my weird, I'm <laughs> so glad someone does. As I said to you before, it, it doesn't come from the masculine, it doesn't come from logic, it doesn't come from thinking, it doesn't come from this will work, people will love this because, like, it doesn't come from processes and strategic thinking, it comes from more of the feminine than I've ever used, more intuition, more divine guidance than it ever has. And that has just meant that I've had to trust and surrender on another level. And I don't know about you, who have I got on the call that's like, a, on the live right now, that's like a high achiever and finds themselves falling into a pattern of being a control freak? Just, where are all my control freaks at? <laughs> just give me a wave emoji, if you know what I mean. You know, like you, you desperately want to surrender, it would feel really nice to fall back and know that's, that you're just, someone's got you and some, a higher power is looking after you and that you can just connect more and you don't have to think more and you don't have to, yes Tara, <laughs> me too, me too. Who else is a bit of a control freak? Most high achievers are, yeah, Claire. it, look, Claire. Um, so we really want to, we want to fall back. We want to connect more deeply. We want to work from that place. We want to operate from that place. Loads more control freaks. Um, but we find ourselves getting really thinky, just too thinky, you know? It comes from all up here and it comes from like your basic needs, what you need to happen, what you think people want, how you think people want you to be, all of that stuff. And this has required me to just surrender all of those attachments and really, really let go and connect, I try and control everything, but I'm trying to let go more. And it just gives us so much peace. And here's the thing, we're scared to release control because we worry that if we lose control, then everything will fall apart. But we never really had control in the first place. We just had anxiety of trying to control everything. And there is nothing more exhilarating and liberating than truly, truly deciding to just trust more, connect more, and operate from that place all of the time. Say no to things that don't feel good, that don't feel aligned, and not have to explain it with logic. But really, really connect with that. The brain god is <laughs> slightly overrated, 100%. 100%. It designed to keep us safe. It's designed to help us survive this human experience. It's not designed to help us thrive and be abundant and live in a place of joy and fulfillment and all those other things. That comes from something else. The inner us, the inner goddess, as Tandra just called it, quite rightly so. So it's required me to do that on another level. And the mission for the movement that starts on the 11th of February which is at 7.30 UK time, by the way, the live class that I'm holding. And I might just add, if you want to be alerted about registering for that to save your seat, because we haven't got any landing pages or anything like that at the moment ready to go, but just comment saying, remind me please. And one of the team will capture your details so that they can send you a reminder and make sure you're registered for the live class. And if you're not around at 7.30 UK time on the 11th, then you can catch up on replay. So. I was kind of, I could feel something stirring. I could feel the inner callings of a new way of working, a new, a new offer, a new, 
you know, just just a whole new way of being in business. I could feel the transition happening. Nothing, this, nothing that was the same fit anymore. Because as you move through to a higher vibration, things start to fall away and that feels uncomfortable because the things that even you felt like were working really well suddenly stop working as well or you don't enjoy doing them as much because they're just not a fit for that vibrational match that you've created. And this started happening and I was like, right, so just if you give me the mission and literally just talking out loud like a crazy person, give me the mission, give me the, the reason why and everything else I'll build around it, I'll make that my focus. Like asking for divine guide and I'm kidding you not like I put pen to paper and the words just like fell out of the sky and that was it that was it and I'm going to share the mission with you the exact words I haven't edited to edited altered overthought it it just it is as it is and so it is and on the 11th I'm going to read what came through to you word by word and you know since that day the mission has got me out of bed in the morning earlier than ever before with a spring in my step and a sparkle in my eye that I don't think has ever been there like this like honestly I, I've always loved my work you know I've always got so much pleasure from helping the people I help and I live a great life it's not like I was miserable before but this has just took on a whole new level of meaning and it got me thinking about motivation and the fact that people try so hard to stay motivated by goals by stuff by dream boards vision boards by materialistic needs by maybe other people that they want to help by lots of other things but when you connect deeply to the reason that you are here and the next chapter is given to you in such a powerful way nothing matters it doesn't matter what a troll says to you on the internet it doesn't matter what a family or friend says though that don't get your business or your vision or it doesn't nothing matters everything else it just becomes insignificant you will move out of a place called motivation it's just a state of being it just you don't need someone's like you can't stop it becomes like an obsessive compulsion to just do what needs to be done and it feels good it doesn't come from a place of panic fear it comes from a place of love and wanting to do it and excitement and it just takes on a whole new meaning I want that for every life that I touch in entrepreneurship. And that's what this, this webinar is going to be about, developing that inside of you. You don't need a why, you don't need a dream board, you don't need any of that stuff. And we're putting together an experience like no other on the 11th of February to help you feel that. And you don't have to feel certain and connected all of the time. You don't have to spend 100% of your life feeling high vibrational on fire. It might not be realistic, but let's face it, with hormones and PMT and, I don't know, kids that are playing up and all the other stuff that we have to contend with, it's okay to not be okay sometimes. But all you have to know is that I was certain when I was certain. When I felt it, I believed it with every fiber of my being and I can draw on that certainty, I can draw on that belief in any given moment. And that's what matters and that's what I'm really excited to help you create. Over the last 24 hours, it got me thinking about joy in our work. And two things happened over the last few days that made me just feel so sad. And so, so sad for the people that don't experience this, but so committed to being someone that has an impact in this area and that changes that. Because I'll tell you what happened, openly and honestly, and. Um, the first thing that happened was I, a few weeks ago, started to just put my feelers out for a new coach, a new mentor. Nick's <laughs> five kids homeschooling. Yeah, I would imagine you have your moments, Nicola. <laughs> Anybody would. Um, I was on the ha a hunt for a new coach, a new mentor. Someone that is the fullest expression of where I'm going next. So I wanted it to be someone that was operating a business at that million a month level, that was operating in a really high touch way, like still all about people, still at the center of their business, not everything's been automated or handed off to somebody else to do, but they're still very much, you know, working like this live with people and that was really important to me. And I had kind of a list of things that were important. And one of the big things also was the feminine. Um, 
I kind of got the masculine lockdown, like the processes, the strategy. That wasn't where my growth needed to come from this year. It, it needed to come from the things I've described to you, trusting more, surrendering more, connecting more. And I wanted to have that fierce feminine influence in my life. So I started to look around and I, I came across this incredible woman who'd been in my life for a while and I just hadn't noticed. It's funny, isn't it? They say when the student's ready, the teacher appears. Well, that's exactly what happened. And my coffee's getting cold, so hope you don't mind, guys. <laughs> um, so I found this powerhouse of a woman who I started to do probably what you always do when you're deciding whether somebody's a fit for you to learn from. You start having a bit of a silent stalk, right? So I started watching a few of her videos and reading a few of her posts and just kind of feeding into the energy of her and how she operates and her message and is it aligned and how does it make me feel? Do I feel better for being in her presence? Do I feel more unstoppable, more energetically aligned? And the answer was yes, yes, yes. And I then noticed on one of her posts that she tagged one of her private clients in the post. And it's a significant investment that I was about to make, um, 15,000 a month um, up front minimum of three months, so 45,000 uh, US dollars up front to work with her privately. Um, and I was gonna initially do that and then because it's a new relationship, then potentially go continue that for the year. So that was my plan. I knew the prices, I'd, I'd already got that information and was about to book a, a call to, to have that conversation and just happened to see this client had been tagged with an, an amazing milestone that she'd achieved in her business. Um, so I decided to have a little nosy at her as well. You know when you go down the, <laughs> the rabbit hole on Facebook and you're like, oh, just browsing and it's such a time hoover. It was totally, totally pointless because it doesn't matter what results somebody else is getting. It's not relevant to the results that I'm likely to receive. It's about my match with her and the work that I'm prepared to do and the value that I'm prepared to extract. So I wasn't looking to think, oh, what's possible? Because if it's possible for her, it's possible for me or anything like that, but just curious. And obviously a bit of time on my hands. And here's what I found. So this, this, this woman that I decided was gonna be my next mentor, who is amazing, by the way, incredible. She has a very particular way of doing things and she's got a very particular presence about her on live videos. She is ridiculously herself and unique. She's unique because she's herself, totally authentic. She wears a hat in most of her lives and it looks a bit like a witch's hat. I don't think it's a witch's hat, but it's shaped like a witch's hat. And she's got an unbelievable presence and at the start of a video she goes, hello, hello, welcome good morning, good morning, and like she's saying hello to everybody in a very particular way, and then she'll say, if you're joining me today for the first time, pop in the comments and let me know that. And that's the way she talks, and she's captivating and calming and motivating all at the same time. And I love watching her videos. Very, very particular style. So you can almost see the depths of her soul in her eyes as she's talking. She is just so unfiltered and beautiful in every way. And I go and have a look at this client that she's been working with. And as I look at her profile, the first thing that catches my eye is a live video. And what really drew me to it was the fact that she's got a hat on. Different colour, but the same hat. I thought, oh, that's interesting. So I hit the video because it piqued my interest. I thought, is she, is she gonna do what she does? And I hit the video and this girl, different girl, different face, different human, goes, hello, hello, welcome. And it was like, doo, it's like the twilight zone, like a clone. Now I don't say this in judgment. I don't stand in judgment of any woman. In business, I say that I wasn't a judgy feeling that I had when I watched this. It was a feeling of, oh, sad, sadness for her. In that she's not been 
she's not been encouraged, and I don't mean by a mentor, by the way, I'm not saying that's her job, but I've, she's not, she's not been guided to her own light. She's not been guided to go within and extract her own special magical something that, yeah, and we do, Amanda, absolutely we do. And there's nothing wrong with modeling successful people. And there's nothing wrong with taking something that you think works and working on it to incorporate it into who you are. But we have to be so careful not to lose ourselves to that. And I didn't think too much about this, if I'm honest. I moved on quite quickly, but I, f I remember, I distinctly remember feeling a bit of sadness because I thought, oh, it would be so lovely if you knew your own power and you could show up in a way that, of course, you're my girlfriend, that's so funny. You could show up in a way where we can see your soul in your eyes, your sparkle, your uniqueness, your special something. Because it didn't feel the same. It felt different. And even if I didn't know, I'd have known that something felt off because people feel that energy. And then, Last night, I watched a film on Netflix, a docu-film, um, that, and it's still on there now if you want to watch it, it's fascinating. It's about Jim Carrey, it's called Jim and Andy, and it's about the part I played, he part, a part he played in a film where he was cast to play a, a comedian from long ago who's now no longer with us. And he went so far into this part that he embodied him. He was constantly trying, of course, for his role as an actor to become him on screen in a really powerful way. And by the time he'd finished filming, he didn't know who he was anymore. Now this might sound dramatic, but I see this all the time in the online space with people that have social media businesses that require them to be visible and do videos and show up and I see it constantly. I see this, the evidence of people I've worked with, even people that have come to me for help, even people that I've been masterminded with, I see the evidence of this threat of people losing themselves. And there's a part, it's so sad, the docu-series at the end because it's sad because at the end, Jim Carrey's talking about his experience as he is now. And he has totally and utterly lost his light. His light has gone out. Now you see this Jim Carrey at the start, who's on Oprah, talking about a million dollar check that he wrote to himself, for himself, as a manifestation tool for his first million dollar contract. And it's so powerful. And I remember watching that years ago. And I remember doing something similar and he has got so much right about the universe and vibration and energy and what's possible for him and his potential. And he talks a lot about that throughout this docuseries and how he's used manifestation to manifest his entire life. However, he just happened to be in a world where his dad was a showman. He got his self-worth validation and his self-worth through being the showman and being out there and being extrovert and being someone else not who he was at his core not his authentic real self and he used the universe and that persona that he'd created as a tool to get what he thought he wanted which was fame and fortune and when he arrived at a place of fame and fortune two things happened he felt desperately unhappy and the meaning went out of his life because it had all been about that. But he'd lost himself so much to this character that he'd had to create to be liked, to have the fame, to have the fortune in his mind, to have the million, because that, or the millions now, because that's the route in his mind he needed to take. And I just felt so sad for him because by the end of the film, he was basically like a, a shell of a person that had given up didn't want anything anymore. He said, I have no goal, I have no ambition, I have nothing, because when I had it all, I realized it wasn't important. That happens to so many entrepreneurs. I've met people with millions and millions and millions in the bank account and an empty heart. 
And I've met people with nothing in the bank account who are full up to the brim with joy and meaning in their life. Money isn't the thing. Fame isn't even the thing that causes one way or another. The thing is losing yourself, losing your authenticity, dimming your light and almost trying to step into someone else's shoes and become them and not, look, there are no rules, guys, in how you can do this. You can create a life that you absolutely buzz from every single day with a combination of, an entrepreneurship, of entrepreneurship and, and spiritual growth. Deep, deep connection to your soul and to who you really are and using that light from within to change the planet in some way and help other people and be played, paid handsomely for doing it, of course, and not have to sacrifice in any way, no trade-off, no limitation. It is all yours for the taking. And what made me feel so sad about Jim Carrey when I watched this is that he just doesn't, he just doesn't get that. He doesn't get that because his experience has taught him that people loved the character he created and he's frightened to death of letting the mask slip and that they won't love the real person. And then that's a trap people fall into. I've got to keep doing this because it's working and it leads to a life of just, of, I guess going, and this is deep, but either giving up the character you've created and boldly becoming who you really are and risking losing everything around you that's been built because of that character. Peeling back the layers to the authentic self and knowing and trusting that it will be okay when you do, better than okay, better than it's ever been. Or going to your deathbed in a suit, in a mask, and never really knowing what life might be like if you took it off. And I can't think of anything more sad than that. This is a call to action to be you. This is a call to action to take off the mask, go within, connect with who you are, minus all of the things you've been told you are, all of the ways people have interpreted who you are and then projected things back onto you, all the ways people have told you to change, be more of something, be less of something, stripping it all back and really connecting in with your soul and playing all out from that place, from that place. I commit to doing that so honestly and so deeply that just by, hopefully, just by being around me doing that, even though I'll get it wrong sometimes, even though I'll mess up, even though not everybody will love me, hopefully you'll draw on some of the courage to do that too. And this is gonna be a big part of what I'm gonna be sharing with you on the 11th of February when we do our live class together. A big part, because I'm gonna be sharing parts of myself I've never shared with anybody, other than my real kind of nearest and dearest. Stories I've never told publicly, experiences I've never shared. Because for me to lead a movement of people that live from this place, I have to live it wholly and truthfully. And that is my commitment to you deep right for a Tuesday morning <laughs> but look if you um, haven't already don't forget you can I, we haven't got landing pages and everything yet for the 11th of February we will have shortly if you want to be sent a reminder so that when we do have all of that together you can get your place in the live class saved and then just drop a comment saying remind me please and one of the team will get in touch and they'll take jot your details down and then as soon as we do have all the opt-in pages um, you can be the first to know have a wonderful day. Speak to you soon.